Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So uh, anyways, let's, I, th I think it was a good idea. Let's kind of break this up into an additional video in this, in this final video with regard to the propellers. I think it's going to be the final one. Uh, it's going to deal with the load, the aerodynamic load, that torque load associated with kind of accelerating the propeller as well as dealing with kind of the pressure of its movement, you know, with air. So anyways, um, you take you into the, the model here. You see I cleaned it up pretty well, I believe. And that the receiver of the, the lift and the load is shown right there. All right. And so I'll go into this block. All right. And, and so I'm going to do two things. All right. I want to fix this problem that, you know, why am I, creating a zero and assigning X and Y when everything's kind of organized with Z anyway. So we're going to go to kind of the scalar representation as we only focus on the local Z, you know, kind of associated with the orientation of the vehicle, right? So, well, we might as well delete these right now. Uh, I think I'll keep the, the D mux because we might use that. But let's go into this block. And so this ships with Simscape multi-body. And so when we created that component inside SimWise, well, it saw it was a force and it knew how to represent that on the, the Simulink side with this block, actually not X, but let's keep Z. But then also let's use the same block so that we can apply the torque load. And so there's torque Z, force Z. Right? So we see it's all kind of set up this way now. Right? And so... We're going to get a little bit into Simscape here. I'm going to type in and find Simulink to PS converter. PS, think of it as physical signal. So it takes a straight up Simulink signal. And essentially, the main thing is it's going to apply a unit to it. Right? Probably should have left the one that was there because it was already configured. Right? And so the main thing is that the unit of that incoming signal will be newtons for lift. And it'll be newton meters for torque. Okay. Right. And now take this D, yeah, this D mux converted to two signals and kind of send it in this way. Uh, is that the way I want to do it? Actually, I think, um, well, let's keep it like that for, for the moment. All right. And um, I think the way we probably really should do this is recall that we've set up a bus right there. All right. And so we're going to need to unpack it. So I'll just grab one of these. And we're going to need to connect all these lines. And so this is now going to be called the, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I might rename this later. <laughs> okay. FTZ bus. All right. And we get rid of all this kind of stuff. We, we'll just connect that line straight in. So this could be XP lift drag, which is the one we have right here, it appears. All right, and so now let's paste that in like that. And uh, I love buses, but until you connect it to anything, they don't know what they're dealing with, All right, And so they read what they're connected to. And so this may have the wrong name right now. We'll fix that, but I think I got it set up so that, yes, it's now seeing uh, Force Z and Torque Z. And we'll select that and we'll remove what was there before. And here's kind of a one of my favorite tricks is I'll select that block that's too small and then I will select this one and I'll go to Format. How to deselect. So let's try that again. Go to format and I will match the height. Okay, good. And so now my lines are straight, more horizontal. And so uh, 
think I'll just call it prop bus. Okay. And uh, that's all looking pretty good. Let's call it maybe XP prop bus. Right, and now let's just replicate it for the other instances of that. So I'm gonna, I think I'll take that, control C. Now this could be XN right here. And I'll delete that. And I will paste in. And I'll match the number on the input port so I don't change the configuration on how it connects to the, the level above. So it's six before. This one will be eight and this one will be seven. Okay, so we're gonna do that same thing two more times. Control V, that automatically gives it the eight. And this is Y, uh, IP and we'll do the same thing down here and this one will be YN. Let's last check, see if I got these names right. Which I didn't. Okay, now I think I got it right. So uh, anyways, don't need any of this anymore. Let me just do a quick sanity check. All right, so that's XN. That's XP going to, to XP. That is XN going to XN. YN going into YN. And YP going into YP. Anyways, that, that works pretty good. And um, it may work right now. Actually, we should hit run. I think uh, before it was about 15 seconds before it hit the speed where it could handle this. And it's possible that we're putting so much drag on it now that it will never hit the, the speed that will... Ah, oh, there it goes. All right, so it's rising. All right, so I'm pleased about that. All right, and now it's just going to check a few things. And so um, we no longer have to select off of the three-dimensional vector that was unnecessarily 3D, but I guess we should go inside some of the blocks to see what some of these values are. All right, so let's just, uh, just delete that. And I think I'll do it by going in here. I'd probably change the mask on this so it more accurately ref reflects the way we reconfigured it. But uh, let's see, which one are we in? We're in XP. And so I'll just put in a scope and kind of keep track of what's happening here.
All right, well, kind of again, we're kind of acknowledging that it's kind of coming up to speed and let's say that, that I'm pleased with what I'm seeing here, all right? And I'll explain that, you know, with regard to an initial validation, all right? So that lift is going up and torque is going down, meaning that torque is becoming more negative. And so that's what I expected that, it, you know, we recall we put in the minus uh, L to, to D uh, gain to make sure that those would be opposite in sign. And that it really means that we're receiving the benefit of the upward lift and that the vehicle's moving, but our motors are doing the work and therefore they're putting it into it. Uh, we'll come, you know, validation, of course, is important. We'll come up with you know, additional ways in which we'll kind of validate we're doing things correctly. But uh, that's the main point of what I want to do here is to mechanically, you know, make sure we get in the idea that force doesn't come for free. And that ultimately we need to track everything back to, well, I'd say electrical, whether we more directly model the electric motors that are driving this or not, you know, the, the, that that's where our power supply will be coming from. So anyways, um, this one was a little bit uh, shorter. And uh, with this, I think we kind of got the basic mechanics down. And so we're going to move into controls. And uh, there will be a number of really kind of fun topics there, too. So anyways, thank you.